Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Civil Texas. My name is Freddy and today's video will be looking at how we can extract the Float Zone 3 map from the EA's website and put it in our DWG drawings so we can stop importing those ugly PDF scan files that we all used. Before we begin, uh, please hit the sub button so we can continue to create more content for you guys. Thank you. Let's begin. To start with, you need your coordinates or any postcode to pinpoint your site. In this case, we're going to get our coordinates. So we're going to hit ID. And we got our Eastings and Northings, as you can see here at the bottom. So go ahead, copy the Eastings, and we're going to go to our EA's website map. I'll leave the link in the description below. And then we're going to go back to AutoCAD and get our Northings. Copy and paste it. And then we hit the search bar and we can see that our site is actually somewhere in float zone three. Now, this window should be on your right hand side. If not, you can click the download your data arrow and this should appear. Now, what you need to do is you need to click your area of interest and then hit the polygon or the pencil freehand draw. And then we're going to select our site. I'll hit the polygon. So polygon works by click to point. So we're going to just select like around the perimeter of the site roughly. So just to capture roughly the data. And then we double click to finish. And then we're going to hit the shape file download. Now we're going to download the shape files. If you have a way to transform your shape files into DWG drawings, go ahead and do it that way. Or you can download Q. GIS. It's a free software. I'll leave the link in the description below where you can uh, download it. So let's hit download our data. And as you can see here, uh, download our data. Now, what's important is, is to extract them and bring your drawing and create a new zip file and name it EA plot zone three. For because we're looking at float zone 3 as an example. So open the zip file and then go to the folder that you extracted from the download file from the EA website and go into the data and move those items into your zip file. The reason being is because we could have used that zip file if it didn't have a subfolder. And for the QGIS software to read the shape file, it needs to be under a zip file only and not with any subfolders. So now we've got our zip file with all our ship files in, we're going to go ahead and open QGIS. So as soon as you open QGIS, pretty straightforward, we're going to go layers, add layer, add vector layer. And then we're going to hit the three dots. And we're going to select our EA float zone three map, hit open, and we're going to click add, it's going to prompt us it should prompt you a window where you will select which uh, OS grids you should use. Mine is already set up to the Britain ones. We're going to hit OK and then hit close. Now, as you can see here, it didn't just extract the area that we have. That's probably a bug with the EA's website. So we can solve it easily by bringing our side boundary. So what you can go ahead and do is just save your side boundary on a separate layer. I have it already saved up on a separate layer in my Excel folder. So, or you can just copy paste it from your site, proposed site plan, save it in a different file and just give it a name site boundary. So what we're going to do now is go to projects, import and export, import layers from DWG. Now we're going to save our QGIS file. We're just going to save it over and then we're going to import our DWG which will be our side boundary. The reason we're importing our side boundary is so we can select the area of float zone three that we needed. If uh, EA had fixed the bug with their website, we wouldn't have to do that. But in this case, we have to do it to solve that problem. So we select our side boundary and it will load and you can see the layers. We can untick the layer zero if you, if you don't have anything in. And then we're just going to hit side boundary as a group name. Hit OK. And our side boundary, as you can see, is loaded. If you cannot see your side boundary, 
what you can do is untick the EA float zone map for rivers, hit the zoom full button, you'll zoom in and then tick it to see it again. Now the next step is to create a shape file around your site area. So what we can go do is layers, add layer, create layer, new shape file layer. And we're gonna give a name to that file. So let's just save it where, wherever you want. I usually save it like in the same in the extras folder. So I'll just give it a name and call it outline. Then we're gonna leave the file encoding the same, but the geometry type we're gonna put it as polygon. We're gonna give it a name, outline, and then we're gonna hit okay. Now what you wanna do is hit that pencil button is or toggle editing, and then hit the add polygon button. Now what you can go ahead do is left click left click the areas that you want to bring to the to the CAD with you. I'm just going to grab the major areas that are on my site just so we can be aware of what's happening around the site. To finish hit right click. Give an ID. I'll just give it number 1. And now we have this. Now what we may we created a mask, so basically we're going to tell now QGIS that everything inside this polygon we need to create as a new shape file. So we're going to go to Vector, Geoprocessing Tool, and then Clip. We're going to select our outline as first, and then the other layer, layer is the EA Float Zone. Hit Run, and it should take a few seconds and then close, and it should have created a clipped version. So if we untick the outline, the EA and the side boundary, you can see that's your float zone three in the area that you shape. So if you wanna extract that in DWG, all you have to do is right click, export, save feature as, and we're gonna save it as a DXF file. So we will save it in our XRF, name it EA float zone, three then we're gonna give it the put the coordinates we want british national grid then we hit okay we don't need to do anything further if we minimize that and we go back to our autocad and we hit open and find our dwg switch to the xf here and then we open it that's our uh, shape file so what you can do is because it imports it as a hatch all we'll do is select the hatch, recreate polyline, yes. And now we have the hatch boundary. So basically you can remove the hatch or add transparency. What I usually do is add transparency and select it, add transparency to everyone and move it to a new layer, which I will name as EA float zone three. And give it a color dark blue because it's float zone 3 and we're gonna recreate the boundaries for this one so we can make it stand out so recreate polyline yes recreate polyline yes and then we can save it as a DWG and we can give it the same name EA float zone 3 and then we'll close it, and then you can go back to your server boundary, uh, to your proposed site plan, attach the WG, select your EA float zone 3 DWG, hit OK, and now you have your float zone 3 area in your DWG. And if we go to our viewport, zoom in, save it in 1 to 500. Right there, seems pretty good to me. Down. And what we can do is add a key. Switch to hatch mode and I give it a name EA load area middle and it's because we know what color we use for the hatching. Solid one selected solid transparency 50 we gave it, then color 60. 
So that's how you get your EA Float Zone 3 map into DWG. You can do the same for Float Zone 2. Basically, any EA maps that's supported by ArcGIS, which is the platform they're using, you can extract them and put them in DWG. Hit the like button if you liked the video. Hit the sub button if you loved it. It will help me a lot in the long run. And thanks for our sponsors, Ben and Mikol, for allowing us to use the AutoCAD license to bring this video to you guys. Till next time, see you again. In today's episode, we'll be looking at how you can create, how you can create, how can you extract, extract, extract. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Civil Texas. My name is Ferdinand. In today's video, we'll be looking at how we can extract the EA's flood zone maps and import it into our DW, 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 DW.